Hello and thanks for watching my video. This is another in the series looking at the dungeon runs in Guild Wars 2 for 2015. Uh, I'm going to jump in straight in because I'm a little bit late uh, to this party. As you can see most of our party are stacked here at the beginning. When, so when you open for path 1 uh, the doors, there are a lot of uh, Svanir come out and will stack at this point here. Um, I'm just going to pop a couple of consumables. Give me a bit of magic find and uh, damage uh, resistance and uh, sort of extra damage. So just here, this position, I'm just going to res this NPC. Uh, this position here is a good position to stack so that they all come down and you're able to cleave them pretty easily. Uh, we can then get the next part which is they have two turrets. This is what you want to take out. They have some ice elementals uh, and some Savannah there as well. The main idea is to take out the turrets because what that will do um, that will open the doors here and you don't have to worry about killing the rest of the swan here, you push on so we move on, you don't have to worry about doing this event here you can ignore that, make sure to take some condition uh, removal because you will get crippled and pinned down by those uh, swan here rangers so uh, you're moving on, uh, slight issue we had here they don't normally chase this far, I don't know what happened but um, th th normally you, you can get, uh, get rid of them quite quickly but uh, sort of they don't follow you for some reason they did it's the first time in like sort of 40 runs that this has ever happened so um, you can see here we've got some uh, elite uh, swan here sort of hounds uh, wolves we stack in this position here so you, you can stack the might as you can see we've got pretty good damage from might um, and then it hit the wolves come here and we managed to sort of wipe them down pretty quickly um, I don't normally take this damage and I realize it's the swan here behind me that I don't know why they followed us um, and they kept following, we tried to sort of just ignore, like sort of run away so they'd be out of combat, but they still kept following us. Um, it's the first time it's happened, so you can, this part of the video uh, doesn't usually happen, um, but uh, yeah, th this is the bit you want to come to. You want to come to this position here, as I'm expecting my guys to sort of, uh, I'm expecting them to get to the, the elites to actually walk away. They seem to be targeting me for some reason. Um, but you'll notice now that we've got the Corrupted Troll in the top right corner has just popped this event. This guy is a beast and you do not want to engage him directly. Um, especially, we're a pug uh, you know, party. Uh, we've got two Guardians, a Warrior, Thief and a Zerkarelli, being me. Um, again, my party hadn't uh, ever seen them come this far before either. So it was a bit of a, a, a shock to see them all the way out here. Uh, it's probably one of our guys got crippled and they kept following in quite quickly. Um, but yeah, so we, we take, finish off them and then we decide to take out the Corrupted Troll and this is the most efficient way to do it. Everybody stands on this position here. Um, the Troll doesn't come up, but he just stays in this position here. We, we sort of, he's, he's immobilized and then he doesn't move from there. Um, we're going to nuke him down. I'm going to bring up the combat log because it, the guy, uh, the, the the troll does do a lot of weakness which for me is a real uh, annoyance because it removes my critical chance significantly and things like Ice Bow will do a lot less damage. You can see here I'm doing a, uh, he jumped out of the way but the, the Ice Bow troll doesn't tend, if you stay in this position he does not tend to uh, progress any further, he would just stay there. So. You know, there's not much else you need to worry about. Um, you know, we're doing pretty but substantial damage as it is. Uh, I don't think our damage with two guardians. I don't think it is. The, the, I don't think they are Zerker uh, Zerker uh, guardians. I think they're just healer guardians. You can see here he does hit for about 5,000 damage uh, using Troll Smash, which causes weakness. Uh, he does have fear as well. So uh, for me, I, it's a little bit annoying that I have to keep cleansing to sort of condi you know, use condition removal um, on my healer skill 5 uh, to bring up uh, healing rain. Um, but yeah, he, because of this annoying weakness, uh, it, you can see that it does. I'm doing a lot less criticals uh, when I'm uh, afflicted with uh, weakness. So as you can see we're taking him down, we're not really, none of our parties suffering too much health damage, only the sort of the light uh, and the armoured part, although my, one of my guardian party members isn't doing too well. But it's pretty straightforward, uh, the, the, you know, we're not taking too many risks here, and um, we collect uh, the sort of the strong box, and um, we get another uh, chest here, and then we move into a sort of nice little area. Um, and uh, during this boss I will talk a little bit about Heart of, uh, Honor of the Waves. Um, HOTW for those who are unfamiliar with the acronym. Uh, we get a nice bit here. This is fairly straightforward. We just stack over here. 
the boss can be a bit tricky because ads uh, do come along uh, every so often during this part. Um, but at the moment we're just waiting them for them to finish uh, talking. I'm going to cr create a Earth Elementalist because uh, the Glyph of Elementals. This guy, the Elemental, uh, the Earth Elemental is extremely tanky. He has got a lot of health and he gives protection. So that's why I've cr uh, created him. So you can see on um, our combat log left how much damage we're actually doing here with our AoEs. Um, we we'll get rid of those pretty quickly. There's normally around two waves that you need to sort of worry about before you can engage the, the main boss. So we've killed the first one and then you'll get some adds respawn. Um, take out these adds and we can then start to focus on the boss which is uh, Alder Sp Stormbringer. So I think we're just about finished. Um, again, no, no real difficulties at this part. Uh, the, this boss can be a bit tricky if you're not too careful because he does do some sort of AoE. Uh, and uh, cold damage. We tend to, uh, you can see the AO AOE ring there. You want to move out uh, and just, uh, I tend to stand uh, a little bit higher up because the adds, where those six uh, sort of snow drops are, that's where the adds will spawn. So this is pretty straightforward. Uh, the heavies are, st are stacked on him. I'm just a little bit further back because there's, I don't think uh, any adds spawn behind us. Um, I think uh, they might have done it or another uh, run, but um, anyway, uh, where I am now, nothing spawns behind me, it's only in front of us. So this is a little bit of a benefit to us. Uh, during this, a couple of our guys get downed. Um, I don't think, we don't have the highest DPS, for those of you interested. But let's talk about Honor of the Waves. Uh, I feel it's one of the least appreciated dungeons uh, in Guild Wars 2. Um, you know, we, there is a, it's one of the few places as well where you have to take out a boss underwater. And the, the end game boss uh, in one of the past, underwater. And if you haven't got, uh, most people don't fully max out their underwater stats. And it can, because obviously the headpiece changes. So if you've got a full rune set of six for your like main armor, if you go underwater and your uh, face mask doesn't actually have that, then you will not get the sick bonus stat that you normally get with your, um, you know, your six runes. So you gotta just be aware of that. But that's for another dungeon. Uh, for the hot honor of the waves, again, it's a level 80 dungeon, but people don't tend to do it really. I mean, again, it is like Crucible of Eternity. It is a bit of a medium length uh, dungeon. Uh, you can tell this video just uh, 17 minutes long. Um, again, you know, I reckon we could have done it up just over 10 minutes if we had a pretty pro uh, heavy damage uh, Zerka meta, but uh, we don't, so we're just going to uh, see how it goes. Um, again, you know, this dungeon is it's not too challenging, uh, it's a reasonable dungeon, and I think people don't do it as much because the armor sets that you can get that aren't really fantastic um, for you know that you get out of this. It's not like uh, Citadel of Flame or sort of um, you know Sora's Embrace. You can't get uh, it, you know too many Zerka uh, sort of armors out of this. But um, yeah, so we've defeated the boss and we're going to move on downstairs. This bit annoys the hell out of me. Um, I haven't done this in a while, uh, so I always try. <laughs> I, I thought, oh, this should be easy. You do get these um, frost bombs that knock you back. As I missed the ledge there, so as I jumped down. The the frost bombs knock you back as you try and go towards this boss here, uh, or towards the gatekeeper, and uh, you'll get knocked back. And I kept getting knocked back, and it had the elementals attacking me. So um, I was a little bit uh, annoyed at this uh, doing this. These AoEs I'm trying to avoid and then I get sort of frozen, um, I'm trying to wait for it. So I hit, get hit by the frost bomb that gives you a knockback. Um, and then I thought you used to be able to go, climb through there. I tried so much, then I tried to res somebody and then I got start, I get pushed back and I get everything happening to me. I was just like, what the hell? Um, I thought I could jump through that little gap, uh, but it was the next one along that you can jump through and I made a mistake. So you can see that you can't jump to the left of the pillar, you, uh, the wood beam. You have to go round it and then go left to the next one. So I just made a mistake there. Meanwhile, ahead of us, uh, there's uh, the gatekeeper's been killed by my teammates. Um, and they've pulled a chain that's opened the door. Uh, that stops the frost bombs uh, spawning. You can see I still tried to go to the, through the beam. <laughs> and um, I was being a bit of an idiot there. Um, so the frost, sorry, frost bombs 
do keep, I think, I don't know, they killed them? No, they haven't killed uh, the gatekeeper just yet. So it's now, I think they have, yeah, so, oh, we've stealthed, so that's why there's no frost bombs spawning. Um, anyway, so we moving on to the next bit. I will stop talking about that because that was a bit embarrassing. Um, we're going to push on, and so there was, there's the chain that you pulled to open the door. Um, we get two elites here, so you stack up to your left-hand side. Uh, you're getting a nice position here. Remember to stack the mites. Uh, again, it's not as useful as it used to be, but it is still a significant boost for your damage. Oh, you can see my combat log here. So I've popped uh, a couple of extra precision bonuses. Look at these criticals I'm getting here. 5,000 damage, 5,000 on each one. So I'm doing uh, 6,000 there. So I was really hitting hard there. Uh, and then we move on and we get the final boss. And this boss here is a little bit challenging. Um, it, if you our party com didn't have uh, too much outgoing damage. So he has three totems, uh, pretty similar to uh, some of the Crucible of Eternity bosses, uh, the Golem, where he ha they has turrets that boost him uh, with bo with boons. It's the same here. You have the re the protection, which obviously gives uh, this boss, uh, the Butcher, uh, protection, negating some of your damage. He has retaliation, which is a significant uh, impact on your party, the fact that you get a lot of damage dealt back to you. And he, uh, he has regeneration, meaning he's healing over time. Uh, my advice would be definitely take out the protection. If you're lightly armored and you know you don't have too much healing, take out the, uh, the the retaliation turret as well. The regeneration one isn't so uh, important. Normally, you've got a high damage out, uh, sort of higher damage party. It isn't too big a deal. We didn't. Um, and what I'm going to do, I am going to skip forward this part. The guy has a few little attacks, you know, swir you know, sort of. He swirls his axes, um, reflecting projectiles. But there's not really much else to say. This is a this is one of the bosses where that you can't stack anywhere. Um, you have to take out some turrets, uh, sort of. Sorry, t uh, totems to stop the boons being applied to uh, the boss. And that, that's pretty much it, you know, take out the, the protection one because then the damage you do, you do less damage because he's got 33% at least damage reduction. And yeah, that, that is pretty much it. Um, I will speed up some of the dungeon after I s is finished talking, but um, I mean, the, the dungeon does give you obviously the standard gold, tokens, uh, you know, loot. You do have a fair few champions in this. Um, but it doesn't tend to be one of the more popular dungeons. Uh, P1 is probably the easiest path to do compared to the other two, but uh, overall, you know, it's an okay dungeon, you know. It's a level 80 dungeon, which is a bit different to, say, Ascalon Catacombs, Citadel of Flame. Um, but yeah, I, I hope this guide's going to be useful for you guys so you can see how best to do it. Um, we're taking it, we're, it's going very, very slowly here. Uh, <laughs> But um, yeah, if there's any comments you've got, if there's any suggestions that you think uh, I may have missed out, remember this is a, uh, a pug party, so um, I joined at the very last minute. I didn't know any of these what any of these guys were. A warrior, you know, two guardians. Uh, my guardian's a healer guardian, so his damage output's minimal. So I'm wondering if this is the same for these two. But yeah, I'm hoping it's been helpful. Um, some of you guys have mentioned that these guys are, you know, proving, you know, making your some of your runs a little bit quicker. So I'm, I'm going to keep doing them I, um, when I can. I'm, I'm tending to do them for the, the, the quicker runs first. Over time, I will get the longer paths, uh, particularly you know things like Sorrow's Embrace Path Two, um, sort of Citadel of Flame Path Three. They, they will eventually all be put up. Uh, I'm just trying to do some of the easier dungeons first, uh, and then uh, you'll be able to sort of go through them at your own pace. Anyway, uh, thank you very much for watching my video guys, I uh, hope you enjoy it and I'll see you on the next one.